I'm walking along. It's a nice, beautiful night. Clear sky. Stars in the sky. There's the moon, but it's like half gone. It almost looks like a grin. Hmm. So I'm strolling around this meadow, and it's quite a beautiful meadow. You can, I'm pretty sure during the daytime, it's loaded with wildlife, mooses, deers, all kinds of things. So, I'm heading south. I don't know where I'm going, but I just enjoy walking at night. And this area is really beautiful, only for the fact that it's surrounded by pure forest. So you kind of see the tree line in the distance. Wonderful sight. So I decided to just stand around, enjoy the view, see galaxies. Hmm. This is around... I can't remember exactly when this happened, but it wasn't too long ago. But my opinion of time is different from all of yours. I look up at this one star because it's actually quite bright. I spend a lot of time laying in the middle of fields and trees and I get a gander of stars all the time. And this star, I haven't seen it before. It's quite bright. And I remember once a, uh, a young woman with colorful hair, almost like a mermaid. She once told me that when a star brightens up like that and twinkles, it's dying. It's quite beautiful, actually. And I looked at her like, there's nothing beautiful about it. A star is exploding out there. Other universes are dying. How... I looked at her like demented. I was dead beautiful from that point of view, but I've never experienced it, so how would I know? I mean, it's so sad to see a star die and destroying other life around it that it creates. It's quite a sad thing. I don't know what happened to that woman after that. But as I was saying, this star was getting closer and closer. And I didn't know what to think after that. And finally I heard a crash. Very loud hit. Like thunder. And I look up in the sky. And it breaks. Like a, like a rock hitting a window and you see a crack. It, that's what was in the sky. And this ball of light came crashing in but its light was like a glow of a candle very warm then I watched it just get across the sky it almost looked like it was close to it like a stone's throw away and finally it landed near the uh, trees and I ran over there because this is a beautiful ecosystem if it catches on fire, the wildlife could die. And I don't want that to happen. I love this part of the area. So I ran over there as quickly as I can. And I immediately heard and felt the crash. I felt it to the floor. As soon as I got over there, it was, there was nothing wrong with the land. The trees were fine. They were a little bent to the side, like, like, like if a meteor actually crashed there and it made the impact move everything. But the trees and, and bushes and grass, it was fine. And there was a, it looked like there was fire. But there was nothing there. Like whatever landed there did no damage to anything. No fire, no burnt marks, not even a dent in the earth. Just, it's just you couldn't tell that something landed there. And I thought to myself... Aliens? No, couldn't be. So I stayed around the area and I looked around. And I heard someone crying. <laughs> Within a couple distance. It took me a while to get here. And so, but it didn't take me that long. But I looked over. I see these bushes. Pretty big bushes. So I go over there. And I see what looks like a man. With a womanish haircut kind of curly and he's against the rock but he has his hand his head between his ankles 
he's crying. And I didn't know what to think of him. He was wearing a, a, a robe, like a very white robe. Very, it looked like it was, he was sitting in the ground. It didn't even look like there was dirt or anything on it. Not a smudge or grass stain, anything. So I go over to him and I say very quietly, say, hey, are you okay? And he just looked at me with tears in his eyes, red too, like if he was crying for a long time, almost like he lost something very special or lost someone very special. I haven't seen tears like that on anybody except for that one man that I met who lost his wife. He looked up at me, and he just, his eyes went from being sad to angry. And then he shouted at me, why? Why you? What makes you so special? Why does he favor you? And I said, huh? And clearly I thought, I said to him, I think you're delusional right now because I fell from the sky before and hit the ground and, and trust me you, I know what you're feeling you got a weird headache happening you don't know where you're at just relax let me help you here I can heal you up fix you up I know some I know some spells to heal and he just he kept staring at me nodding his head and he said don't come near me don't come near me stay away from me I can't stand you why do you exist why does he allow you to exist? And I'm just confused just looking at him. I don't even know him. I've never even met him. But he knows me. Do you ever get that feeling that someone is behind you? Someone's in the room with you? Presence in the darkness? You ever go to a dark room and you just feel somebody's there? And they smell burnt. And I look around, and I check behind me, finally, there's a demon there. And he wasn't ugly, but he wasn't good looking, I'm not saying that, but he looked like a male. Looked human. But his skin was brownish black. Like the same color that you see on paper when it burns. You know how you burn the edges of a paper, and you see where the fire left its mark, it's brown and black. That's what his skin looked like. He had tiny horns on his head. It looked like a little baby goat horns. And I was told by a witch that the uglier the demons are, the more powerful and nasty they are. This guy didn't look too menacing, but you can tell he was up to no good. And I looked at him and go, what is it that you want? What are you doing here? And he said to me that that's a fallen angel. I said, I looked back at the, at the guy who supposedly is the angel and he was right. I can't believe I didn't notice this, but he had wings like a hawk. And he just, I looked back at the demon and the demon too, he's just standing there by the tree like hiding I don't know why he looks like he's hiding but he's hiding like halfway his body hiding almost like a like a stalker so I said how do you know he's a fallen I, so I said he's a fallen angel I was like the why is he the demon said that whatever he did, Omega wasn't so happy. Omega and the Alpha cast him down. The demon said, I've come for him. And he goes up to the angel, walks right past me, tells the angel that you, you have a choice. You come with me to my father and my king, and we will make you better than what you were up there. Then the angels said, away from me, you beast. I'm better than you. I've always been better than you. You betrayed us all. Then the demon said smirkingly, whatever you did, you, got, you betrayed 
Omega and the Alpha. You're down here. There's no way you're getting back up there. You might as well just join us. Join us from our fight to take back what's ours. Take back what's ours and from the Omega and the Alpha and to get rid of the new demon. And I just realized they knew who the new demon was. The new demon is way more scarier and way more harmful than them. And the angel just pushed him away and they were just arguing back and forth that he's not going anywhere and that he has another chance. I didn't know what to do at this point. I didn't know whether to intervene or just let him argue. I only came here to make sure nothing was destroyed, nothing was harmed. So I'm watching them argue. The demon is yelling at him to join us, join us, join us. Stop being stupid, stop being stubborn. They don't want you back up there. Stick with us. And sooner or later your skin will turn into ours and your wings will lose its feathers and you'll get this nice black look. They have bat-like wings, so... It's, it's just, it's kind of interesting that how does an angel have hawk wings and then it goes to like a bat? It's bony and nasty. Yeah. So... And in the heat of the moment, the angel and the demon are fighting. I, I, I turned away for a few seconds and they're all, and they're just, they're hitting each other, smacking each other. And the demon got on top of the angel and started clawing and, and biting him. Then the angel pulled out a knife. I could not see this knife, but he, he must have had it against his ankles or something because he was wearing a cloth. That looked like something, you know, that the, the, uh, the togas. Something that Greeks wore. And he stabbed the demon in the knee. And the demon let out a nice shriek, a nasty yelp. <laughs> and backed away. And I'm watching this all go down. Then the angel charged at him. And slit with his little knife. The knife was probably about 10 inches. And when he missed that angel... That knife went straight through a tree. And the tree fell. And immediately, I, I, I had to do something. I've never seen an angel fight. But I, if he's an archangel, I don't think he's an archangel because I haven't seen a flaming sword yet. But if he is something similar to them, they are not to be messed with. Not even I can stand up to him. Then the demon just looked at him and smirked and then out of nowhere like a trident spear appeared in his hands almost like if it came from the shadows themselves but with embers everywhere and then this trident spear the middle pole of the spear was corkscrewed and then he chugged it at the angel the angel quickly dodged it it went it moved pretty fast i could barely keep up with it and as soon as it hit the ground, it ignited a fire. But immediately, I ran over there. I grabbed the, the trident spear and I pulled it out and I threw it. And I tried to gather whatever water I could find on the floor. From all the moisture around the area. And I put out the fire. And I looked at them. And they just stared at each other. And then I told them that you guys need to stop this. Fight somewhere else. Do not fight here. This ecosystem is important. I've seen what they can do. I've seen what their weapons can do. They're just going to cause harm. They ignored me. And just stared at each other. Then without any reason, it started to rain. I looked up at the sky. There was no clouds. It was a clear night. These clouds came out of nowhere and it, it just started pouring. A little bit of lightning, but no thunder. And then as quick as the lightning flashed, they were fighting. They were using skills, whatever skills they developed. I've never seen an angel fight with a tiny knife. 
10 inches may be big to some, but against a trident spear like that, he held his own. But they were causing so much harm to the environment, I couldn't believe it. So I intervened. I ran towards them as fast as I can while they had a stalemate. The angel had the knife against his throat, but the demon was also fighting back, trying to get his trident spear to go into his foot or something. I couldn't see what he was doing because from an awkward angle. So I charge. I jump in midair while charging. And with all my force, through my hands, I pushed air and propelled towards them. Like a speeding bullet almost. With a shoulder charge, I charged the demon. My shoulder against his face. And within a few seconds in midair, I put my hand against the angel's face and shot it. A powerful blow of air into his face. Knocking both of them away from each other. And that's when I raised my voice and told them, you cannot fight here. You need to stop this now or take it somewhere else. Not here. I won't let them harm this area. This area is important. If the, if the environment is destroyed, the animals will die. If the animals die, the humans will lose everything to take care of their livestock and everything to take care of the animals that they hunt is from them. Everything will die if they don't stop now. But then the demon looked at me and said, giggling too, like, <laughs> I don't care for the humans, he said. I don't care about animals. This world is my grave. And if it's my grave, it's going to be my playground. I'm not going to wait around and die. I'm going to have fun. And I'm not going down without a fight. The humans are nothing but dogs. Dogs don't even know the difference between an owner and a crazy man who's killing them. They're loyal to whoever feeds them, and you're being fed to by a greedy, greedy god. One that wants to be almighty and powerful. Him saying that made me mad, but it sent a chill down my spine. I stood my ground, and I remember what that Spartan taught me. I formed a shield out of the earth itself. Mud, twigs, branches, leaves, grass. I formed this round shield. Only thing I had was defense against these two. Then I looked at the angel. And he just walked towards me, got into my face, and said, I don't know why he favors you. You're an abomination. Your mother was a whore who opened her legs to the scaly beasts. You were created with sorcery, lust, like the witches and warlocks make. You're an abomination. You shouldn't exist. Why does he favor you? Why did he let you exist? Why did I have to look over you? No idea what he was saying. I just looked down. I don't know if he really was a fallen angel or just a, a hurt angel. I wanted to do the right thing. And the right thing was to stop this fighting or get him to do it somewhere else. I put that shield down to show that I didn't want to fight him. The demon I'll deal with, but not him. He walked past me. I thought he was going towards the demon. But he kicked my knee in from behind. Put my face to the dirt. Pushed it in the mud with his foot. Holding down my horn at the same time. Screaming and shouting, Get back into the earth. Go back to the earth like your great father before you. The first one. You're nothing. You're an abomination. Go back to that ground where you came from. I didn't know what to say. I 
I knew who he was talking about. The first human who came, who was created from the earth, and his wife was created by his rib. I remember that. Reading about it. I didn't know what to do. Until I lost it. Until I lost it and realized no angel would do this if he was still on the good side. I used an illusion ability that I often use to test what strategies an enemy does. It takes a bit of my health. It kind of slows me down, but it works. While he had me down and placed, I evaporated into the dirt and reappeared in front of him. Punching him in his face, he stumbled and fell to the ground. I hit grabbed him by his ankle and swung him. Swung him around towards the demon. And when he fell, or actually when he crashed into the demon, and then they rolled down this hill in the meadow area. He was on top of the demon, and the demon suddenly got on top of him and just started clawing and scratching and biting that angel. He was tearing him into, just looked like he was trying to tear him into pieces. I didn't know what that was. Watching them, and that demon is just with his tongue out, scratching and pulling and biting. I think I realized what that demon was doing. He was trying to send, get him to surrender. It's like a Stockholm Syndrome thing when a kidnapper takes somebody. They beat him to a pulp and, and they, they force them to obey them. I think that's what the demon was doing. I couldn't let that happen. I couldn't let them work together against me. So I grabbed that shield and went down there. Jumped in midair again because it's a steep hill. And with the edge of the shield, I hit that demon square into his neck, looking like I broke it. But he stumbled down into the dirt, tried to get back up. The angel got up, used his knife, tried to hit me, blocked it with his shield. Held it down, just kept blocking him. I knew that demon for a while was going to be out. But then that angel had a trick up his sleeve. A nasty trick. He shot a beam of light into my face, blinding me for a second. I felt a sharp pain in my arm. He either stabbed me, or I lost my arm, I don't know. But no, he did stab me. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, should, I, I couldn't believe it, but I expected it. I knew that blade was going to pierce my skin. Not many blades can pierce my skin. But I forgot. That I'm just, I'm lower than angels. I've never been stronger than them. Demons are one thing. But these are, he wasn't an arc, but he was something similar. But then, here comes the demon. The demon tried to stab the angel. And I don't know, in my instinct, I wanted to protect that angel. I grabbed the trident spear before it was able to pierce him. So it pierced my hand. And it just... It, I, I managed to stumble that demon to where he lost his balance and fell. Then the angel started working on him. I'm sitting there with a hole in my hand and a sharp pain in my arm left arm actually I don't know what the hell that demon's trident spear did but I felt cold and a stinging sensation I don't know if it was poisoned or some kind of curse but damn did it hurt my veins were turning black and purple 
thought to myself, I can't win this fight. So I did. I did something I wasn't supposed to do. Unless it's a last resort. Mother. Mother gave me a, her blessing to use nature's power. Storms, wind, the earth, the water. She blessed me to use anything. But there's a consequence to everything. And I only use it when I really, really need it. So finally, I went into outrage. Outrage. I lose control. Obviously. But I borrow the very essence of nature. I borrow the life force of every living thing in and around our solar system. And Earth itself. I look down my legs turn into shadows, you know, a kind of dark matter. And I see the plants, the grass, dying around me. And I beg them and tell them I will, I will fix this. Just let me get them out of here. I kept repeating it to nature. I, I kept, I'll give it back. I'll give it back. I need your help. Within a split second, the whole world around me looked white, like a limbo. All I saw was the angel and the demon. With a split second, everything's happening in slow motion, but I'm pretty sure that they didn't see it coming because within that split second of that slow motion, they were still staring at each other while they were fighting. I grabbed the demon by his neck, squeezed and choked his throat, and I felt his spinal cord snap from his neck. And while squeezing, I squeezed his skull out of his skin, like, like a seed popping out of a grape. And I looked at the angel. I too grabbed him by his face, lifting him above me. All the strength I had with that left arm still hurt from that stab. And I sent him flying into the sky with a powerful burst of energy that came from nature itself. Sending him into the sky. Probably into the depths of space, I don't know where. And finally. I look down, I look at nature all around me, I surrender, I give it back, I give back everything I borrowed, all the life essence that I borrowed I gave it back, but I also gave it back with interest. I passed out on the floor, face first. I just fell asleep. I woke up. All I see is black. But I knew where I was. I was covered in moss, grass, mushrooms, the roots all connected around me like a spider web. I crawled out slowly. I didn't want to harm nature. What you're probably wondering is what happened. When I borrow nature's force, I give it back. But I also give back a piece of my own life force. And I let the world feed off me off my very power it's 
kind of like it's kind of like watering your plants and feeding it every day you do that to plants they grow strong they grow bright I give them double that what they get in the middle of the land yeah mother nature takes care of its trees and plants I just give it a little extra when I got up everything looked fine it was sunny I don't like sunny days but it was sunny the trees need it the flowers need it saw some animals in the distance quite beautiful my clothes is messed up I had to get out of here go find the nearest town I mean, hmm. felt I don't know what just happened I don't even see that demon anymore I I, I don't even know what happened to the skull it must have maybe somebody picked it up I don't know how long I was out but It happens here and there. I usually don't use that ability, but mm, I needed it. Suddenly I heard a ugly voice. I wish I could mimic it, but I can't. All I heard was you. I turned around. I said, Hi, Azog. Zog is a scary demon. He was an ugly demon. He had four horns made of what looked like antlers, but they were made of trees, you know, had bark on it. His face looked like the skull of a bull, a dead bull at that. His body, his body just looked like, like mud. You ever seen mud covered in just leaves and debris? He was very skinny. He had wings that looked like tree branches. And he just looked at me in anger, sitting on a rock. But little did I, he, little did he think I didn't know that those rocks were alive. They were just pretending to be rocks, when really they were rock men. You see, what Azog does is he had sex with all the mountains in the world. He's basically a rock demon. His offsprings defend him in battle. Those rock demons are pretty strong. They can be huge, they can be small, but they're not to be messed with. But I know that that wasn't his true form. He was way uglier. Because he is one disgusting monster. He causes sickness, sometimes pollution. But yeah. He looked at me with anger in his eyes and he said, You killed my son. I was like, He had it coming. What do you want from me? Basically, he's mad at me. Saying, You borrowed essence from my mountains, from my nature. This is mine. You stole it. And I will take it back. And I will get vengeance for my son. He's full of empty threats here and there. But he is still no one to mess with. Like most demons. They can't do much. But they can do a lot. After him and I kind of talked a little bit. I, I, turned about, I turned my back towards him and left. I turned back around to see him. And I knew it. Those rocks he was sitting on, they were rock men because they just vanished. Like nowhere in sight were those three big rocks that he was sitting on. Like a little princess. I found a trail hidden down there to civilization. 
Then suddenly I saw a lonely llama all by himself. Hmm. Didn't think much of it. Probably just a, a wanderer. One sudden he started talking to me. He asked me, may I walk with you? I said, yeah, why not? I'm just heading into town. Need some new clothes. He laughs and says, huh, you look like you look like hell. I was like, yeah, long story. He goes, oh, I know. I saw you fight that demon and that fallen angel. I stopped for a minute. He's like, oh, yes, I've seen it. Do you know who that angel was, he said. I was like, no. I just, he fell. I, just, I wanted to know who he was, but... He was hysterical. Crazy. Then he said, You were very kind to get his story first before you pass judgment. That won't go unnoticed. But he was your guardian angel, he said. I looked at him like, I have a guardian. He goes, of course, everyone has a guardian angel. But the deadly sin envy and anger triggered him. He questioned Omega, questioned the Alpha, and was cast down. He envied the fact that you, the way you are, Born half man and half the beast that these humans think dragons are. When they're really just lizards with bat wings. The real dragon lies beneath the sea, chained up, waiting to come out on the day of the rapture. Lama said. Then I looked at him and I said, are you an angel? He goes, yes. I love llamas. Such a wonderful creature. A silly one, too. I saw one spit on a human and I laughed. It was cute. But the human was nice enough to not hurt it like some do. I kept walking and he kept following. Basically, all he told me was that that angel is not dead but what I did was enough to harm him managed to heal yourself correctly but then he told me please be careful you live in a different time in a different era don't show what you really are to the humans there will be consequences if you do that the next time you see an angel and demon fight leave him alone don't get involved we understand, he says, we understand that you did it to protect the land. That won't go on, that won't be unseen, you know? He said it won't go, he said it won't go unnoticed of what I did. But he also reminded me that when nature said, she said, Every effect has a cause. And it reminded me of the time I stole a storm to aid me in battle. And because of that, that storm was meant to go to the tropics. And because that storm didn't show up, the animals that lived on the tropical islands needed that fresh water. It caused a drought. Some of them died. Plant life died. The birds died. I have to be careful how I use that stuff. So, trying to get all of this in, saying, wow, that, that was a guardian angel that just straight up hated me. The llama disappeared. But I heard him echo saying that you'll get another one. And maybe this time 
This one will like you. He said jokingly. I could tell that Angel had a sense of humor and it was nice to know that. 